Hey, this is Jan Ezra. I've been using Adobe Premiere Pro probably for over 20 years, and I don't think there's ever been a feature I've been more excited about than this speech-to-text transcription function. It's fast, it's accurate, it's free, and it's incredibly easy to use. In this video, I'll show you how to use it and how it's going to transform any video that can benefit from captioning, which is to say, almost any video period. Okay, let's start by taking a quick look at how efficient it is to create captions. So this is a lesson from my latest course on live streaming. It's about three minutes and 15 seconds long. Drag it into the timeline, click captions, text is already selected, and click transcribe. And I'm gonna select all the defaults. Three minutes and 21 seconds. Open this up so we can see how long it will take. So it was 29.20, and the steps that are going to occur behind the scenes are Adobe is going to create the audio file, upload that to the cloud, and then transcribe in the cloud. We're going to get back a transcript to which we can make any corrections that are necessary, and then we're going to convert that transcript, which is presented here, into individual captions that are presented here and in the timeline. So the transcription's done, we see that here, and it took about you know under a minute and a half to do three minutes and 20 seconds of video. So it's very, very quick. And if I wanted to, at this point, I could play the video. In this video, you'll learn how to set the exposure on a Sony A6300 D. Okay, so we see a mistake there. I could click here and A6300. DSLR camera. So I can make the change there. I can also make the changes after I create the captions. So you can go through here, and then when you've got it set, click Create Captions. Again, accept all the defaults. And now Premiere is taking the transcript and then creating individual caption entries here. And as they say, boom, you're done. At this point, you would click File, Export Media, and you can export your fully captioned file with the captions burnt into the video or as a sidecar file. So I don't know if you've ever done this process yourself, but to manually caption a three minute file like this would probably take a half hour or longer just to get the text transcribed and also to get these individual entries both created and aligned. It's very time consuming, very frustrating, and this new feature just totally does away with it. Okay, now let's look at this feature in a little bit more detail with a different project. So this is an interview I performed over GoToWebinar with Michelle Forsigland and Tim Siglin. And this is an interesting use case because we know audio is degraded somewhat by Zoom and GoToWebinar, so we're gonna you know, check the accuracy given that degradation. And we're also gonna explore options like moving captions under one or other of the speakers. So we've created the sequence down here. Click Captions. And let me do one thing before we go to the, and create the captions. I'm gonna set an endpoint at zero, select the out point at five minutes in, and we're going to create the captions for in to out point. And come up here to text, transcribe sequence. Looking at the different features we have here, if you've got all the audio clips with dialogue in a dialogue track, you can select this, we don't have that here. If you've got all the dialogue in a single track, you can select that here, or you can just choose the mix as we're doing here. You can transcribe in point to out point, which is what we're doing. You can merge output with an existing transcription. If there is one, we don't have that here. And apparently you have to opt in to identify speakers in the transcription, which is not available in Illinois for some strange reason. And once you select this once, you'll never see it again, so no big deal. Let me open this. So we're 255. Let's wait until we get to 256 and Adobe is going to create the audio file, upload that to the web, and then we'll come back to us with a transcription. Okay, so we are well under two minutes to get to our transcription, which appears here. And let me get things aligned a little bit. 
Okay, so here's our transcription. Again, if I wanted to make any changes here, I can do that. And a couple of interesting export options here. I can export the transcript. And this is a transcript file that you can use to save all the details of the transcription to import into another Adobe Premiere Pro project. Not quite sure why you want to do that, but you can. You can also export a text file. And let me do one thing before we export the text file. So here we have speaker one, speaker two, speaker three. If I wanted to edit this, I could, I'm speaker number one. Tim is speaker number two. And Michelle is speaker number three. Now that appears here, but it doesn't appear if we export the text file. So if we export that way. Here's the file we just created. So we see the transcription, but we don't see the identification of speakers. So I'm not really sure where this shows other than the P transcript file that you can import back into Premiere Pro. So it didn't appear to show up in any captions or any of the exported files. Again, I can correct any of the audio here, you know, play through the video file, correct the audio as needed, or I can do that after I create the captions. Create the captions. You can create the caption preset here, create a, a blank track if you want to insert them manually. Not sure why you'd want to do that. And in most cases, you're just going to use the subtitle default. If you're exporting 608 or 708 or these types, then you may want to play with those. But for burned in captions, this is what you want to use or SRT sidecars as well. Here's an additional formatting option. Again, choose subtitle. Now we're going to create and save a style in a moment. That's what we do over here. If you've got a file uh, style created, you can choose it here and implement that in other uh, transcription projects. Maximum length and characters. In this particular case, 42 is a good length. I can stick it under here or stick it under here without any issue. But if you're putting captions in a smaller window, say you've got three speakers in a Zoom conference, you may want to make that smaller. And I've, I've done that type of work before where I needed it smaller. You can also set minimum duration in seconds or set the gap between captions and choose between one and two lines. And I've always gone with two lines. And once again, Premiere Pro is going to create the captions, create the little inserts and align them as necessary. So a couple of things you can do on the edit side. Let's, you know, here we see that Tim is saying this. Again, you can't see his name. And if we wanted to move that over here, we can do that very easily with this control. If you want a multiple select holding down the shift key, you can select multiple and do that as well. And that's a nice convenience if you want to go through the aggravation of placing all these under the individual speakers. Not quite sure that's necessary in a case like this, but it is doable. In addition, if you wanted to change something, like change the font to say Arial, let's go with this. So we've got the new font here. If you wanted to push that out to all of the captions, you would click this and that change goes over all the captions. So that's a nice, easy way to affect all the captions at once. And we talked about track style. If you want to, if you want to create a new style, you click and the next time you create captions, you can simply choose that style and the options we have here from the captions area are to export an SRT file. So, and let me export a text file. And if we look at those files, here's the captions.txt. And again, no identification with the captions, no time code. And the SRT, of course, is going to have the time code. And then you can import this into YouTube and other services or other products that require SRT captions. 
And once you've got everything squared away, again, if you want to change anything in the particular caption, you can do it here. You can do it here and it'll correct in both places at once. When you're done, click file, export media. And then as we saw the first time, you can export either burnt into the video or you can create a, a sidecar file. So that's the new speech to text function. And not only does Adobe do a great job converting the speech into an accurate transcription, it also takes all the work from placing all these individual files and copying and pasting text into them. So it's a huge time saver for anyone creating captions in their videos.